Hi everybody, it's Catherine here and today is February 13th, 2023 and this is my day 20 healing video and as you can see um, I am still with spots on my face from spot treating after my 21 day 5 fluorouracil treatment. I did stop treating these oh four or five days ago. So they are healing. Um, I did have to wait for them to kind of get a little bit of a scab or ulceration on them, which um, each of them did uh, a little bit differently. Um, so I, uh, in my last, my day 15, I had put um, some uh, concealer on these spots to show you actually how nice my skin looks. And I'm gonna do the same thing but I thought I'd just kind of give you an idea of what those spot treated areas look like um, before I did that. So I'm gonna kind of um, bring you in and just kind of show you how this one has a light scab on it. It's um, now starting to turn a little bit brown and it actually just feels like sandpaper. This one right here is almost that same sensation and um, it'll be a few more days before that decides to, I think, start peeling and losing some skin. This one right here was a little bit more ulcerated. I don't know if you can see that in there. Um, this is the one that I'm most concerned about uh, when I see him uh, in, what is it now, three weeks? I'll see him in three weeks. But overall, um, it took a long time to react. And that's when you need to be concerned when something takes a long time to react. Um, why it can resist the 5-FU cream um, is of concern. And this one right here finally started to get that kind of ulcerated feeling to it and is now starting to scab over. We'll see what he has to say about this. This had a little white patch in it. Not white, but kind of a pearlescent patch that originally he said would just fall off with the treatment. So I think, you know, I'm hoping that maybe it just took a little bit longer and once this heals, it will do exactly what he said it would do, which is just kind of peel or fall off. Um, so that's a concern. That's a concern. Otherwise, everything else is just normal um, activity. Uh, this one's doing well, it's shrinking, it's got that little bit of dry scabbing on it. And same with this one right here. So overall, super, super, super happy with the treatment as a whole. I'm gonna go ahead and plop a little bit of sealer on, concealer on them. And yes, I will be throwing this tube of concealer away so nobody worry about that. Um, this was a product that I bought that I absolutely did not like and it just came in handy for this situation and actually as soon as I shut the video off um, I will be washing my face again and taking this off I just want to show you you know overall how nicely your skin will probably be looking at around Day 15, day 20, I mean, definitely improvement between day 15 and day 20 for sure. But um, the, the biggest thing is I have really worked hard to just kind of let nature take its course. I used a washcloth, I think around day 13 of healing and just lightly, I mean, and when I say lightly, I mean lightly, went in and kind of got rid of some of the peely skin that was around my nose, um, kind of on my cheeks. Um, my cheeks were another one. So we'll just leave it at that. It's not a perfect job, but at least now when you're looking, it looks pretty good. Um, so let's just go ahead and start. Um, outside of this, you can see these chapped areas are still taking a while to heal, but they are they are doing a good job and not bothersome at all. So that's good. I'm really happy with overall how my nose is healing. And as I mentioned in my last video, those are eyeglass. Um, I'm not going to call them burns, but, you know, just they got a little bit more treated than 
probably a normal person that doesn't wear glasses would have. Um, still quite a bit chapped in here. My wrinkle isn't as deep. That made me happy. It's still there, but it's not as deep. And then of course these, and I still have some melasma on my face. Um, he didn't tell me that it would take rid you know, take care of melasma. Um, but look, I would rather have, you know, melasma than have basal cell carcinoma or AK or squamous cells. So, um, forehead looks really, really good. My eyebrows, which were a real concern previously, um, they don't seem, at least for me, so you can see when I'm rubbing on them, how they get red, um, nearly as red as they had been prior to me doing the five FU. And, um, same thing over here. And it's interesting because they feel smoother too. It's not that they were bumpy. How do I even describe it? It's just got a smoother texture. I, I guess that's all I'll say. They have a smoother texture. Um, and I did have quite a bit of um, scabbing and ulcerations going on in these areas. So I'm really, really pleased with that. And then as far as my forehead goes, um, pretty much all of the spots that I had some decent scabbing on has now diminished into just little, you know, individual patches here and there. The only thing that I will tell you is that when you overexert yourself or for example, like, I don't know, you're picking stuff up or whatever, um, the spots where you did have, um, ulcerations or scabbing, um, they will kind of turn dark, you know, kind of like when you hold your breath, <laughs> um, and then they'll go back to skin color again. So I think for a while there, you will most definitely, if you're exerting yourself, be seeing, you know, where you had reactions in some of those deeper areas. And then, um, this is starting to, I had still quite a bit of, uh, crusty skin stuck in here and, and I can feel that's diminished quite a bit and very happy with the way this is looking. And overall, I mean, if you go back to day 10 versus day 20, remarkable, absolutely remarkable difference. And um, I think I, I don't know what I did here, so I think I scratched myself. But um, what else can I tell you? I've just kept up with the Ordinary Marula Oil and um, I will tell you that does not work under sunblock. So if you are having to wear sunblock or any, any protective cream to, for example, go to work or you work outside or you've got exposure to sunlight, uh, I would hold off on that and use it for a nighttime treatment if you're interested in, in using it. And the other thing too is, I can't find it on the shelf now. Um, it's the Ordinary Marula Oil. You do have to buy it online and um, it takes, you know, anywhere up to, I don't know, 10, 12 days to get it from either Ulta or the manufacturer. So if you're interested in getting that before you start your treatment, order it ahead of time just so that you can have it. But I, I haven't been able to find it on the shelf. And... Um, you know, the, the same thing with the CeraVe healing ointment. Um, I tried it with putting sunblock over it and I didn't feel like it worked all that well. So now what I am actually doing um, in the last couple of days, because we're in Colorado, we've had terrible, terrible snow and cold this year. We had a couple of really nice days. I wanted to get out to my garden you know, have to wear the hat, have to wear the sun protection, have to wear the long sleeves, you know, the whole kit and caboodle. And I can't go out there with oil on my face and expect that I'm not getting, you know, penetrated by the sun rays. So uh, I've gone back to the, the last two or three days. I've been just using um, my uh, CeraVe Daily Moisturizing Lotion and I'm um, waiting for that to dry down. And then I've been going in with um, my, I like this, so this is me, um, my 50 Sport 
uh, Kroger brand sunblock and um, making sure that that's good and dried down. And in these areas right here, even though I'm wearing a hat and it's got a pretty decent brim, I'm going ahead and I'm putting just a little bit extra in these areas right here and also right here. And um, I have to unfortunately keep it off of my lower brow area because everything just burns my eyes. I don't, I don't know why, but it does. So, you know, you, what I'm saying is essentially you really need to modify how you're doing things as your days change. So if you're sitting home, uh, you know, and you're not going on anywhere on a Saturday and Sunday, maybe you can get away with just, you know, putting the oils on your face and being around your house and that kind of thing. But if you know that you're going to have to go outdoors or you're going to have to maybe go to, I don't know what kind of sports go on right now um, that would be outdoors, but um, whatever those might be for you, you know, you may have to modify and figure out a way to keep your skin protected with sunblock even though you're going through either the 5-FU treatment or you're going through that healing process. And I strongly suspect that as the days progress, that's exactly what I'll be doing is for every single thing, I'll be changing up how I'm managing my healing process. And, you know, just being flexible with the fact that my life as I know, as I knew it, not as I know it, but as I knew it is now going to involve so much more than I had ever incorporated before. And it's just the reality of it. Um, and, you know, so, so just be prepared to be flexible with yourself and just know that, you know, what works for me might not be working for you. And always just check in with your doctor if there's something that, you know, is concerning you about your treatment or your healing. Talk to your doctor, um, you know, and express that, you know, hey, look, the issue is, is that I drive an hour and a half to work or, you know, I have, you know, the sun beating on the left side of my face and what else can I do to protect myself? Um, you know, I'm using the visor in my car. I've got a hat on, I've got my sunblock on, you know, but I still can feel the sun beating on the side of my face. Um, let them guide you as to, you know, additional courses of action. And, you know, because sometimes we're just in the moment of trying to live our lives and, you know, and gosh darn it, we just forget that we got in this situation because of the sun, you know, that's how we got here. And it's, it's intense. And I had just been thinking back to a job that I had where I sat in the center of a rotunda that was five stories of glass. And in the afternoon at 2.45, 3 p.m., it was almost like I felt like I was a chicken in a broster. Um, the, the sun was so intense coming from the West. And, you know, sometimes I wonder, you know, did, you know, it probably did contribute to, you know, some of the skin cancer issues I have. But the other thing too is, yeah, I was putting my sunblock on in the morning with my makeup. Absolutely. But what happened at two, three, four, five in the afternoon when I put my sunblock on at five thirty, you know, six o'clock in the morning? It probably wasn't too beneficial for me, and I certainly wasn't wearing a hat in my place of employment. I mean, who does that? You know, you just don't. So those are the kind of things that you know as you're going through this process. Start thinking about the environment you're in. Start thinking about the changes that you know maybe you are going to need to make to accommodate um, either your active treatment or your healing and how you're going to manage going through, you know, the essentially the rest of your life. And for me, I'm now facing, I love to garden. Ah, it is my thing. And I wait all 
winter to be able to get out in my garden and enjoy just the entire process from soup to nuts, from seed to fruit. That's my thing. And we bought a house that has a beautiful, beautiful gardening area that um, we've we've worked from scratch and it it is in constant need of additional plantings and whatnot. And as such, I can't even imagine what this year is going to be like for me in the sense of really protecting myself. I mean, really protecting myself. I've I've worn some sunblock, I've worn hats, I've worn long sleeves, I've worn, you know, but have I done it to, to the extent that I can completely and honestly say I have protected my skin 100% as a whole every single day from spring through late fall? No. No, I would be lying to you if I told you that. Now I really have to focus on that. Now I, I just, I cannot go through this anymore. I just, I, I just don't want to go through this anymore. So, you know, now I have to rewrite my life in a way and, and, you know, be the person that is definitely, you know, out in the garden at six in the morning and in by nine thirty ten, and back out in the garden, maybe four or five, you know, until seven or 8 PM. And do I want to do those changes? No, I really don't, but I have to, I have to, and I have to sunblock and I have to put on SPF 50 clothing and I have to wear the hats and all those things that I've mentioned before, but now the reality is, is that my life as I really knew it and loved, loved it and really didn't think as much about it, it's got to be a 100% conscious effort to protect myself. And I'm 62. What if you're in your 20s? What if you're in your 30s? What if you're in your 40s? You know, you've got a long, long time to expose yourself and, you know, really think about how going through a treatment like this is so beneficial, but how you're going to protect yourself moving forward, truly. And I just, you know, you, you just have to, you just have to. And, um, anyhow, I will let you go on that note and thank you for watching as always. And any of the comments that you have, any questions, um, this is, this is a really hard thing to do. It is. It's a hard thing to do. The people that have gotten up here on YouTube and exposed themselves, you know, we, we look terrible. Um, but what we're trying to emphasize is if, if you're willing to go through this journey, you need to really think about not only the end result, but the future moving forward. You really do. And, and I hope this helps inspire you to really start thinking about that and, and help yourself, um, live a longer, healthier life without, you know, the worry and the fear of, of skin cancer. So anyhow, on that note, I will see you on day 25. Bye.